What's going on everybody? Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. This is tips, tricks, and cool features for the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you some tips and tricks for this phone that you might not know about. Now, before we go any further, I do wanna remind you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It helps out the channel a lot. But with that being said, let's get started. So the first thing I wanna show you is how to show and hide the battery percentage on your status bar. So as you can see up here, by default, the battery percentage is gonna show up there. But if you want it to be a little bit more minimalistic and you don't want that to show, all you need to do is go to settings. From here, go to notifications, go to advanced. And then right up here at the top in the status bar menu, you're gonna to toggle off show battery percentage. And as you can see now, the battery percentage is not showing, but if you ever do have it like this, but then want to see the battery percentage, all you need to do to see it is pull down your notification center and it's going to be right there. So really by having the battery percentage hidden, it can make the status bar look a little bit cleaner and you're not really missing out. The next thing I'm gonna show you is a feature called attentive display. Now, back in my beginner's guide for this phone, I showed you how to change the screen timeout time for your display to help you avoid having to constantly tap on your screen to keep it from falling asleep. But attentive display is sort of similar to this, but it's a little bit more efficient if you're gonna be using your phone for a long period of time without touching it. Maybe you're watching a movie or reading a book or something like that, because after all, the screen timeout time on this phone does have a limit of 10 minutes. You can't set it to longer than that. And even if you could, having a really long screen timeout time does drain your battery because you could forget to lock it. And in that case, it could just stay on and keep using up your battery. And with the 120 Hertz Super AMOLED display that this phone has, you really don't want that. So basically with attentive display, what it does is uses the front facing camera to recognize your face looking at the phone. And as long as you're looking at it and it detects you, it's gonna keep the display on. So to activate this feature, we're gonna go to settings. From here, go to advanced features. And from here, go to motions and gestures. And where it says keep screen on while viewing, you're gonna wanna toggle this on. So with this feature on, like I said before, it's gonna use the front facing camera to detect your face. And as long as you're looking at the screen, it's not gonna fall asleep. Now this is one of those features where it's kinda hard to show in action, but I can tell you from experience, I haven't had any issues with it yet. Now I'm gonna show you a few different things we can do with the power key. So with the default settings, if we double tap it, it's gonna open the camera. And if you press and hold, it's gonna open Bixby. Now, if you're new to this kind of format, you might be wondering if pressing and holding the power key opens Bixby, how exactly do you turn off the phone? It's actually pretty simple, even though it's kind of annoying. All you need to do is swipe down twice like this, tap on this little power icon right here, and this is gonna bring you right to the power menu. Now this might be fine for some people, but if you want it to be a little different, let me show you what else you can do. So once again, we're gonna go to settings, from here, go to Advanced Features. Then from this menu, tap on Side Key. Now the first thing we got here is what happens when you double press it. By default, like I said before, it's gonna open the camera. But if you want, you can also open pretty much any other app you want. So if we hit this gear right here, it's gonna allow you to choose whatever app you want it to open. So for example, let's open Snapchat. So now double pressing the power key is gonna open Snapchat instead of the camera. Now, of course, if you don't want it to do anything, you can simply turn it off. And now if we double press the power key, it's not gonna do anything at all. Now, the next thing we can change is what happens when you press and hold the power key. Now, like I said before, pressing and holding does open up Bixby, which I guess it could be good if you actually use Bixby, but if you don't, you can actually change it to open the power menu instead. So now I'm gonna press and hold and we go right to the power menu. So it's definitely nice to be able to customize what this button actually does. The next thing I'm gonna show you is a feature called adaptive brightness. This is basically exactly what it sounds like. Essentially, it's gonna allow the brightness of your display to adjust based on the lighting of your environment. So if you're in a really bright area, it's gonna brighten up so you can see it. But if you're in a dark area where you don't need it to be as bright, it's gonna dim a little to save battery and be a little bit easier on your eyes. So to get to this, we're gonna to go to settings. From here, go to display. And adaptive brightness is right here. Toggle this on. And as you can see, it instantly adjusts. 
Now, while this feature is cool in theory, there's some people out there who just like to have it at 100% brightness at all times and just don't really care about the benefits of having it dimmer sometimes. But at the same time, the one drawback of having it like this is that when you're using your phone at night and have it so bright, the blue light can bother your eyes and make it harder to get to sleep. But luckily, we do have a solution for that. This feature is called Eye Comfort Shield. It's right here. If we turn this on, it's basically gonna tint your screen in an amber color, and this is gonna filter out that blue light so you can still have your display really bright without bothering your eyes nearly as much. You can also customize it, so if we go here, you can make it stronger or more subtle. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is how you can change your refresh rate. In case you didn't know, this phone does have a 120Hz refresh rate, which is going to make the movement on the screen a little bit faster and smoother, and just feel more premium overall. But the downside to this is it can use up a little bit more battery, so if you do want to save a little power, with this phone you actually can change the refresh rate. So to do this, we're going to go to settings. From here, go to display. From this menu, go to motion smoothness. And as you can see, by default, it is going to be high, but you can change it to standard, and this is going to save a little power. Now, is this really going to make a huge difference in the grand scheme of things? Probably not, but it's nice to know if you ever do want to save some power, this is always an option. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to create a screen recording. Now, this is a really easy thing to do, but it's in kind of a weird spot, so if you've never done it before, it might be a little tricky. So all you need to do is open your quick menu by swiping down twice like this. One two, and the screen recorder is right here. Tap on the icon. You'll get this screen where you can choose what kind of sound you want. So no sound, media sounds, or if you want to narrate it, media sounds on mic. You can also show the taps and touches on the screen. When you have everything all set, hit start recording. There's going to be a little countdown. And as you can see, the screen is recording now. We also got some options here. You can draw on it. You can also have it show yourself. So there's me right there. And when you're done, go ahead and hit stop, and it's going to save right to your photos. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to use the edge panel. Now if you're really new to this phone, or Android in general, you may have already opened this by accident, but the edge panel is basically this little thing right here. If you go like that, it's going to open some shortcuts, and of course, you can customize these. So to do this, all you need to do is hit these lines right here. And now you can change pretty much anything up here, except these four for some reason, but everything else is fair game. Now the edge panel is cool and all, but if you don't use it and you're tired of opening it by accident, you can disable it. So to do this, you're going to go to settings. From here, go to display. And at the bottom of this menu, right here, you can easily just turn it off. So now, as you can see, there's no edge panel. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is a feature called Dual Messenger. This feature allows you to sign into two accounts at once on one app. So like Snapchat or Facebook, something like that. Certain apps like Instagram and Twitter, for example, do have this kind of feature built into them nowadays. So it's not nearly as useful now as it used to be, but it's still a nice thing to know about. So to get to this feature, all you need to do is go to Settings. From here, go to Advanced Features. And from here, Dual Messenger is right down here at the bottom. And as you can see, these are the apps on the phone that are eligible. All you need to do is toggle on whichever one you want to use, and it's basically just going to download a copy so you can log into your other account. Now like I said, it's not nearly as useful now as it was back in the day, because lots of social media apps like Facebook for example already have this kind of feature built into them, but there are still some like Snapchat for example that don't, so if you have multiple accounts on those, it can definitely make things a little easier. But those were my tips, tricks, and cool features for the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you found this information useful as well. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. But as always, I will see you in the next video.